just heard the second demo I created for the brand new Walrus Audio Melee. This is essentially two effects in one. It's a distortion and a reverb. For some people, it might be all they need. It sounds huge. It's great for shoegaze or ambient type tones or even just big distortion tones. In this video, I'm gonna do something I normally don't do and that's go through the controls on this pedal. Obviously, it's a little different. It has a joystick, but it also doesn't have your typical knobs to control certain parameters. It just has switches. I think Walrus did a great job on dialing those in and I had no problem getting great tones for the demos. If you know anything about me or this channel, you know that I love good sounding gear that helps me make music quickly. And I think this definitely does that. Not having knobs to tweak and a lot of different parameters just means that you have to get to creating quicker. Let's take a closer look. After that, there will be another demo at the end of this video. That was the first demo I created. The first video that I made for this pedal, right before I released it, I realized that I didn't even demo two of the different reverb modes. Um, obviously a demo fail on my part, um, and it's why this video is a little delayed. Rather than trash that demo, I decided to put it on the end of this video. Hopefully it gives you even more of a feel for the pedal and the kinds of tones that it can do. All right, let's get into it. Let's check out the controls. Obviously, the first thing that people notice is the joystick. The joystick is used to control two parameters at once. It controls the amount of distortion on the vertical axis that's up and down, and then it controls the mix of the reverb on the horizontal axis or from left to right. Here's what that sounds like. So working our way down on the left side of the pedal, obviously I have volume, I'm not gonna explain that. And then we have a three-way tone switch. This is basically just differing um, you know, amounts of brightness there. So all the way to the left, we have this. Middle position. Below that, we have a decay switch. This is for the length of the reverb. Um, this is going to go from you know shorter to longer. Here's what that sounds like. Obviously that last one is super long and washy, and that's going to sound different depending on what mode of the reverb we're on. We'll talk about that in just a second. This last switch is basically a uh, reverse or um, it swaps the order of the effects, right? So we have distortion going into reverb currently, and then we can swap that to have the reverb going into the distortion. That um, reverb into the distortion is definitely a lot edgier. It's a little more unruly. Here's what that sounds like. Now, 
Next thing I wanna talk about are the reverb modes. This is a thing that I missed the first time around. There's three different types of reverb. There's ambient reverb, octave down reverb, and reverse reverb. Now you'll be able to tell what kind I'm using by this LED when it's pink, it's the ambient, yellow is the octave down, and blue is the reverse reverb. Obviously you've been hearing the ambient reverb this whole time, so let's go to the octave down reverb. You get to that by pressing both foot switches at the same time. That one adds a lot of beefiness. I really like that one for kind of the more ambient thing. On the initial demo track, that was what the pedal steel was using at the very beginning of the track. Just adds a lot of um, depth, a lot of that, you know, real long synthy almost um, sustain to your sound. A uh, really cool sound. Let's check out the next mode. This is reverse mode. Another really cool texture that um, it almost has like a repeat element to it, like a feedback type element. I think you get a lot less of that when the decay is set all the way down. It might be just one. Let's check it out. Yep, just one repeat there. So um, that's a really cool texture, you know, whether you're doing that kind of shorter stuff or if it's just kind of building up in the background with what you're playing. Um, really unique kind of sound. The last feature I haven't talked about is the sustain button. This just kind of grabs what you're playing here. Um, let's check it out on a different mode. So as you can hear, that kind of creates this pad type sound, but it also turns the reverb off of what you're currently playing. So it's almost like a way to create a pad under you, but then it dries up your signal um, so that you could play over that. Just kind of a, a different type of feature, unique feature there um, to create different atmospheres and different textures. Hopefully this gives you a better feel for how the pedal sounds and works. Now we're gonna take a listen to the first demo that I created just using the ambient reverb mode. Um, I really dug this pedal before I realized there were two other modes and now I like it even better. I feel like each mode really offers something unique and different. They're very different than each other so it gives you a lot of different types of tones. Uh, pro tip also, when you get a new pedal, read the manual. It might do more than you think it does. All right, until next time, I'll see you out there.